Today, I'm gonna to take a deep look at how to read and analyze your balance sheet as an entrepreneur, especially if you are not in a position where you can hire a CFO yet. Because look, the balance sheet can be extremely helpful in showing you the financial position of your company, which can then help you to manage your overall business risks and decide which strategic moves to make next. So in this video, I want to show you how to read and analyze a balance sheet simply and easily, okay? I'll take a look at the basics of a balance sheet, how to create one and then analyze it. And then lastly, we'll review important metrics so you understand how you can use your balance sheet to make key business decisions. And of course, I'll have plenty of examples and calculations along the way. So if that all sounds good to you, make sure you like this video while the intro plays. Hey there, and welcome to our channel. I'm Sean with Life Accounting, the accounting company that helps you save on taxes and build more wealth. And if you love that, then please go ahead and click that red subscribe button for us so you stay in the loop with all of our future videos. As always, I'll have timestamps down in the description below so that you can skip to the parts that you want to learn the most about. But listen, if you are a beginner to balance sheets, then you'll definitely wanna watch this entire video so that you completely understand everything. All right, let's go ahead and dive in with number one, what is a balance sheet? So the balance sheet is super, super important and can be a great tool that you can use to achieve more business and investing success. Now, there are many different ways to describe what a balance sheet is, but to me, it's exactly what it sounds like, okay? It is a sheet or a statement that shows you the financial balances within a business. This balancing equation is also known as the accounting equation, which is assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So assets are what the business owns and liabilities plus owner's equity is what the business owes. Now obviously liabilities can be business debt from third parties and owner's equity is also something the business owes just to the owners of the company. Okay, now to easily walk through this video, we're gonna create a fake example of a balance sheet. And we're gonna name this company in the balance sheet Sean's Famous Products, which is very important to note because at the top of a balance sheet, you're gonna have the company's name and the specific date when the balance sheet was generated. So for this example, we'll say that the specific date was March 1st, 2022, which will show you all the assets, liabilities, and equity at that point in time. Now this is very different from an income statement which shows you the data from a period of time which could be something like March 1st to March 30th of 2022. Okay, let's go ahead and look at number two, assets. So typically the first item that you're gonna see on a balance sheet are the assets. The accounting definition of an asset is a resource with economic value that a person, company, or country owns and controls with an expectation that it will provide a future benefit. And as an entrepreneur, you will definitely need assets. Now there are generally two types of assets that are reported on the balance sheet. You have current assets and then you have long-term assets. So current assets are basically assets that can be liquidated and converted into cash within 12 months. So let's continue to fill out our example balance sheet. Let's say that we have current assets of $50,000 cash or cash equivalents because of course that is liquid. Then we could have accounts receivable of $100,000. Now accounts receivable is money that you expect to have in the near future. For example, if you have delivered a service and you have sent out an invoice that is waiting to be paid, then that would be considered to be an account receivable because you're likely gonna be be able to convert that into cash within the next 12 months. Next, you could have inventory worth $75,000. And of course, we could expect that inventory to be sold within the next 12 months. So those are some examples of current assets, which in this case would be a total of $225,000. Next, you have other assets or long-term assets. And we'll put this under property, plant, and equipment for $100,000 because long-term assets are considered to be investments towards the future growth of your company. So they're not something that you would be able to convert into cash within 12 months. An example of a long-term asset could be a critical piece of equipment to manufacture your product 
or if you decide to purchase a property for your operations. So that would bring Sean's famous products total assets to be $325,000. Now stick with me because at the end you're going to see exactly how knowing your total assets can help you make some key business decisions. But for now let's move on to number three, liabilities. So as I mentioned, liabilities are obligations that a company owes other third parties. And just like before, you have current liabilities and you have other liabilities or long-term liabilities. So current liabilities are going to be obligations that you expect to pay back within 12 months. One example of a current liability that we can use in our example balance sheet will be accounts payable of let's say $100,000. Account payables are the complete opposite of accounts receivables, right? Like these could be invoices that your company needs to pay within 12 months or usually within three months. Then you could have accrued expenses of let's say $25,000. So these will be expenses that you know you have, but it hasn't quite yet been accounted for yet. Like maybe the invoice haven't been received, but you know the expense is coming. And accrued expenses are based on the accrual principle, which basically states that you must accrue for invoices that have not been received. Another example of current liabilities a company could have would be deferred revenue, and let's put that under $50,000. You can think of deferred revenue as prepayments from a customer where services and goods have not been delivered yet. And we would record it as a liability because this is an obligation for the company. Like the company must deliver for it to make good on that particular debt or obligation. So this would bring the total company's current liabilities to $175,000. Then as I mentioned, next you have other liabilities or long-term liabilities. And for this example, let's say that we financed our operations and we have long-term debt of $90,000, which brings our total liabilities to $265,000. Okay, let's quickly look at number four, owner's equity. So once you know your total assets and your total liabilities, then what you have left over is owner's equity. So basically you would take the $325,000 in assets and subtract it by that $265,000 in liabilities to get the owner's equity, which is $60,000. And this is what the owners can claim as equity, or in other words, what will be left over if that owner decided to sell all their assets and pay all their liabilities. Now, Here's a very important note, okay? If you have completed your balance sheet and your assets do not equal your liabilities and owner's equity, then you're looking at a balance sheet with an error in it. So something is off and before you even think about analyzing your balance sheet, you wanna make sure that you correct any potential mistakes. In the example we use, we had total assets of $325,000, which equals $265,000 in liabilities and $60,000 of owner's equity. So everything here balances perfectly. Okay, so that is how you read a balance sheet. Now I'm gonna show you how to analyze this balance sheet so that you can make wise financial and business decisions. But first, let's talk about number five. How do you create a balance sheet? So typically you create a balance sheet when you do bookkeeping. So when you're doing your bookkeeping, you're looking at all your transactions. So you're looking at what items you should categorize as revenue and what items or transactions should be categorized as expenses. And at the same time, you're going to be categorizing what you buy that could be considered to be assets and what you receive that would consider to be liabilities. Now, if you're doing bookkeeping yourself, which most self-employed people do, okay, then the tool I recommend you use is QuickBooks. QuickBooks Online can integrate with your business bank account and help you automate the bookkeeping process, thus saving you time and money from paying someone else to do it. Now, I have an affiliate link down in the description below that you can use to create your own QuickBooks account. All right, now that you understand what it takes to create a balance sheet, let's move on to number six, how to analyze a balance sheet. So when you're analyzing a balance sheet, you wanna evaluate each category and try to improve it strategically. Of course, the first category is number one, cash, because cash is the bloodline of a business, and without it, it dies. And so here, what we wanna do is make sure the company does not run out of cash and it can meet its current debt obligations. 
So if we look at our cash position, then we can see that we have cash on hand of $50,000. And if we look at our current liabilities of account payables, we have $100,000, which basically means that we need to pay $100,000 to our vendors, let's say within the next 90 days. But we currently only have $50,000 cash on hand. So then we need to go back to our assets and say, okay, where is the money going to come from to be able to pay off these current liabilities? Well, looking at our accounts receivable balance, we can see that we have $100,000 that we can expect to collect usually within the next 30 to 90 days. So we can expect to use our accounts receivables to pay off our accounts payables. So during our first analysis, we already know that we can meet our current obligations and liabilities. Now with this one, we wanna look forward and make sure, okay, the company is in a position or not in a situation where they run out of cash and fail to meet future obligations. And to do this, we need to take a deeper look into accounts receivables. And what you're gonna to wanna to see is something called an aging schedule, okay? And this is gonna give you a breakdown of that $100,000 of accounts receivables and the time frame of how long it may take to turn that into cash. So it's gonna look at, is it one to 30 days to convert it into cash? Is it 31 to 60 days? Is it 60 to 90 days? Or is it never, right? And then you'll have a good hand handle on your likelihood of running out of cash for the future. And with that, you can turn to your first key business decision and ask yourself, okay, what can you do to speed up your accounts receivable, right? Like maybe that means you would need to put in a new system, or maybe that means you need to accept a different form of payment, or maybe you need to hire someone who can easily and consistently follow up with customers on their payments. Okay, next let's analyze number three, inventory. So when it comes to inventory, you want to make sure that what you have in inventory isn't nearing expiration or becoming obsolete. Because even though we made up an inventory balance of $75,000, that doesn't mean that it is all going to sell and convert into cash, especially if you have products that have a high turnover rate like food products, for example. So this could be more of a qualitative analysis where you're trying to figure out how likely it is that you're gonna convert your current inventory into cash within the next 12 months. Because again, this is gonna tell us the financial strength and the cash position of the company for the future. Next, we have number four, long-term assets of $100,000. And here we wanna ask ourselves, okay, are any of our long-term assets becoming obsolete? Meaning like you don't have any long-term assets in your balance sheet that you no longer need. Like maybe it's a piece of equipment that you no longer use. And if that's the case, of course, you wanna remove that from your long-term assets category and potentially move that into your inventory category to sell so that you can liquidate and improve your cash position. And the key thing you wanna analyze here is looking at a complete composition and a breakdown of all your assets so that you can determine the future economic value they have to your company. Okay, now that we have covered assets, let's look at liabilities. And the first thing we wanna look at is number five, our account payables of $100,000. And the big thing here is to determine the DPO or the days payable outstanding. Okay, this will basically give you an average of how long the company takes to pay its vendors. And each company has its own unique payment cycle. And maybe it's within 30 days, maybe it's within 60 days, or maybe 90 days. And typically what you want to do is extend the cycle to be longer so you have a cash flow advantage. Next on the balance sheet, we had accrued expenses of $25,000. And here we just want to make sure that we have a schedule and we are properly accruing all expenses. Then next under our current liabilities, we had deferred revenue of $50,000. And these again are going to be upfront payments from customers. And for this, we just want to make sure we make good on our obligation to deliver to our customers. So as we're evaluating this number, it's gonna give us valuable insight in terms of what we need to produce in the future. 
And here is the main thing to be aware of with the long-term debt. Okay, you wanna know what is the total breakdown. So you wanna check the loan balances and the maturity date so you know exactly how much time you have to pay off the loan and plan your cash flows accordingly. And then lastly, shareholders' equity is gonna give the owners valuable insight in terms of how much equity they have in their business just as a homeowner would be able to evaluate how much equity they have in their primary real estate property. All right, now let's move on to the final section of this video and look at number seven, financial metrics, which can help you get a better understanding of the financial position of your company from different angles, okay? One of my favorite financial metrics or KPIs to use is going to be the debt to equity ratio. So here, what you can do is take the total debt or liabilities you have. In this case, we had $265,000 and then divide that by the total equity we had, which in this case was $60,000, which gives us a debt to equity ratio of 4.4, which basically states that the company has 4.4 times more debt than equity or stock in the company. Generally, a safe debt to equity ratio is one to 1.5. So anything more than that can indicate that the company is in a startup or growth phase. And the company is primarily using debt to finance its long-term expected growth. And if that's the case, then the next financial metric that becomes more important is the interest coverage ratio, which basically shows you how many times the company can cover interest payments from earnings earnings in a given period. So here you would take your total earnings or your total profit and then divide that by the total interest expense, which you can find on the income statement. And of course, as long as the profitability can cover the interest on the debt, then you should be able to continue to support fast growth. Now, you should know that there are three categories of ratios that help you really analyze the balance sheet, and we just looked at two under the category of solvency ratios. But also you have liquidity ratios, such as a quick ratio, which helps you to determine, okay, if you are able to meet your short-term obligations, and you can find this out by subtracting your current assets from your inventory and dividing that by your current liabilities. And then next you have financial or capital ratios, which one of my favorite being the debt to asset ratio, which basically helps you measure how much a company's assets are financed by debt. And for this, you would do a very simple equation. You would take your total debt and divide that by your total assets. Okay, so there's a quick high-level summary of how to read and analyze a balance sheet for all the analytical thinkers and accountants who watch this channel. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Coming up next, we have two more videos that you may enjoy as well, and I'll see you over there.